All right, so the code for a list is your variable equals and then your brackets, All right? You guys remember with random.choice, we had parenthesis, bracket, x, y, z, bracket, parenthesis. That's because this is a list. Random.choice will only work with the variables that are or the elements that are inside of a list, which is why if you forgot the parentheses or any combination or you switched the parentheses and the brackets, it didn't work. You, you would get different errors. Um, why do you have parentheses and brackets? Well, with every function, with print, we have parentheses with the function that you create fun one you have brackets right so after every function you have I'm sorry not ever after every function you have parentheses and random dot choice you need a the only um, the only object it can use is a list so you have to have the parentheses because it's a function and then you have to have the bracket because it's a list Uh, who, yes, Connor. I'm sorry. Does it still apply when you, uh, um, with the parentheses rules with choice or uh, quotation marks? Like, can it choose from strings that you input if you put them in quotation marks? Yes, because in lists, you can have, you see how I have a number, a variable, a string, and then another variable? Yeah. With a list, you can have any mix, mash, hodgepodge of objects that you want. So you, so you can, can mix variables, strings, and numbers? In a, inside of a list, yeah. Perfect. It's not recommended, but you can do that. Well, does it like cause problems with the code? Or no, it's just you tend to want to keep things organized, so you want to have... It just depends on what you're doing. So if you have... Um, if you want to hard code, the, the you want a random number picked right out of 10 mm -hmm. stop whatever that is trying to throw the tissue at me. well I have it in my hand are you done using it no then don't give it to anyone else because that's gross and when I you're done using it. it when you're done using it toss it Connor it? don't hold his hand with tissues in it that's gross that's true I, was like, I know just that's that. still gross I didn't did I? I just want to toss don't no no no, 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 no. Right? this is recording so <laughs> oh yeah legal action baby <laughs> Oh, so, guys, rein it in, rein it in. Um, but so if I want to choose between one, I want to hard code choice between one, two, five, and whatever you type in. I'd have list one, two, five, and X for the user. So you can mix it up. It's just you want everything in here to be related somehow or to be used for the same thing type thing make sense and it, it'll make more sense when we actually are using lists and going through them this is just introducing the concept and all that yes could you do it where it's like a range but you exclude a value so if I said one through ten but not five or do you just have to do one two three four or six seven, ten? you there's multiple ways you could do that you could create a list of one, two, three, four, another list, two of six, seven, eight, nine, and then list three is list one plus list two, and then list three is one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, that's clever. So you can do that. You could do a for loop. Um, so four x in range one through or zero through nine, zero through ten. If x is five, don't add it to the list, but add everything else to the list. So there's multiple ways. As for creating, a, you could do list one equals list range ten, and this so this right here range ten is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And then this is a command. When you type list, it turns purple, so you can't actually name a variable. You have to have list one or 
you know, list two or whatever. This is a command that will make this range of numbers into a list, and we're going to go through that soon. Masa. So you can like have like list and then like list again, like reprint it, like a function. See so like how like you have a function, you have like fun one, yeah, and then like the two parentheses, parentheses. Commas. And then like you can like print it, and then whenever you want to use it again, you can print it again. So you do the same thing with like one list, and, like you can like reprint it. I think so. I think I'm I think I'm following you. I I believe so. But when we get through the actual coding part where we're doing this on the computer, um, try that and let me know, and maybe I can answer. Maybe I can more. 100% answer it, but I think I think you can if I'm following what you're putting down um, So multiple types of information can be stored lists start at zero Right, and this is where we're going to start indexing Indexing means um, The position inside of, uh, of a list so this position of this one is position zero, because computers like starting at zero. We don't, you know, they don't like, I almost said we don't like starting at one as if I'm like one with the computers, but. <laughs> what if we are computers? This what is now one. Like Mark Zuckerberg reveals a secret. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is position zero, position one, position two, position three. So that, you guys just have to start thinking like that because otherwise you'll get really confused. This is extremely important. With dictionaries that we start in two weeks, it's the same thing. So string characters, so in hello, this is zero, one, two, three, four. So there's five items, but it's from zero to four, not starting one to five. So when you use this, do you just do like, Get number four from list. Basically, but I'll show you how to do that. That's that's it's technically list bracket four, and that'll give us y. That's four, but yes, Paul. So if it's like a two-digit number, would it be zero one? Yeah. Like so eleven or so if this is eleven, is this a string or what is this? Uh, it's in the list. Oh, it's per item. So in a list, you have an item. So we'll have list one is 100 comma 100,001 comma X, Y, hello. This right here is one item in between the commas. So in between the commas is what separates the items. So it's the item that's here, not this isn't one, two, or zero, one, two. This whole number, 100, is index one. 1001 is index two, x is index three, y is index four, and hello is index five. Um, Nikki. So what is the point of a list? Like if you're not using in random choice. So I could I could have a list stored of a deck of cards and I could have it randomly shuffle and randomly deal out cards. You could do a list of employees. So instead of having you remember how we had a string and it was one string that we kept adding to? That's really hard to differentiate when you well I'm like, well what who is the sixth person in the list? Or you have ten names, who is the sixth person you've added? Uh yeah, that's really, really hard to do with a string. As opposed to a list, you just do list index six, or technically five. Uh -huh. Right, but so it, it's a lot easier to organize and sort things. Masa. I, I got like two questions. Yep. Can you, can you put a function in the list? Good question, never tried it. I don't think so though. Let me find out. Uh, you can, but not right now. Uh, yeah, do most people use Python rather than C++ or Java? Depends on what you're doing. So my uncle works for IBM, and I don't know if I've told you guys this yet. But he works in the, he helped the New York, the NYPD with their, so he runs about, he runs a, he has people that answer to him, and his team was in charge of the NYPD Real-Time Crime Center 
in which they use Python for some of their database stuff. Ooh. He didn't tell me exactly what, because I don't think he knows, but um, Python's used pretty widespread. It just really depends on what you want to do. Do you think that you could infiltrate their system? Not at all, nope. Not even close. <laughs> Yes. So is C++ mainly like Arduino and other programs like that? You know, I'm not 100% sure what Arduino uses. C++. Is it C++? It's, okay. I've never actually looked into that. So I have a Raspberry Pi that runs Python, um, which is, the Raspberry Pi is super cool. You can run the Arduino yeah, just, through the Raspberry Pi and then code What do you do with the Raspberry Pi? Oh. What do I do with it? Yeah. Uh, uh, what is I, so far, not much, right? I downloaded code to make a smart mirror, and I just have. I so the code part of it is done. I would just have to build the smart What's mirror smart part. Mirror? It's a mirror that when you wake up, it shows you your weather, oh, I see. Like news, you and hello. Glass, right? What? Like you're building one of those? Yeah. Yeah, you're building one of those. I well, I've kind of stopped because I I got really busy, but yeah, yeah kind of. I won't be here for winter. I'm in Haiti. Where are you going to be? Haiti. I was going to be on the Haiti trip, but then Swider told me I couldn't go on the Haiti trip. Oh, yeah. Bummer. Yeah. All right, let's get let's get back to this. Do you have a question, Josh? You need to be here for Gentlemen, one of your classmates has a question. You have to go through it with a loop, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. Um, lists start at zero. Oh. So what can a list do? So lists, um, there's a command list that will take certain types of objects and make them into a list. The most common one is a range of numbers. So instead of going, so it'd be, so you do range of 100 list, and it creates a list from 0 to 99, as opposed to going 0, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, all the way up, or doing a for loop. You can just, in one line of code, create a list from 0 to 99. And again, I'm going to go through all of this in the coding part. So if you're like, well, how does that work, Mr. Stolter? Just write down the notes, and then follow along when I'm doing the code on the screen. Yes, yeah, Um Remember, range goes from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, but you can use, you guys are familiar with range, right? How to do random numbers or yes, for X in range from z random. Random, yep, random. All right. Or you can do random, not rand range, right? Yep, ran, well, ran, yeah, rand range, and then for X in range 10 is going to go from 0 to 9, right? It's going to go 10 times, but N is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh, One more can list. Yes. It works. What? You could put a function in one. Cool. I've never tried that, so. Hmm. So, one thing you can do, let's say you don't know how, how big of a list you want. Right, you have to ask the user how many people are in your organization, or how many objects do you want on a list. You can use a repetition um, operator to create a number, to, to create a list of X number items. I know that doesn't make sense, but let's say repetition numbers, I have zero, I have a list that's just the number zero. It's a one item list, and I want, I want five objects in that list. I can just do times five, and then you can see my list is the zero that's been repeated five times. So if you type in, Johnny, how many people do you have in your organization that you're gonna hire? Three. Three, I would do zero times three and it creates a list of three things. And then I can, it's it's another way to create and manipulate a list. Yes, don't you? Uh, now this is a big one, a for loop to go through a list. Right? I don't know why my numbers don't match up there, but you can go for n in a list print n and it prints each individual item in the list. So I could do for n in list here, print n, it would print one, two, five, x, and y. And so how would that be useful? Like, what, like, what would you so I would go, I could, so I would start with this, 
I'd start with a blank list or however many numbers and I go, Storm, what are the names of your employees? And you go, Jimmy, enter, John, enter, James, enter, right? You're three people. And then you then go through that list and you go, okay, for John, what is John's title? You type it in and you'd have, you'd have a second list. So then you can match up. I have John, Jim, and James. Then they're a programmer, designer, and artist. And now I can, it, you can match up their, their, uh, their jobs and stuff like that. Um, and I think, all right, list indexing, we did kind of go over this. Um, my list has 10, 20, 30, and 40. It's a list of four numbers. My list zero is going to be the value 10 because that's the first object in the list. Does that make sense, Ty? My list three is going to give me 40. So what would my list two give me, Josh? 20. So if I have zero, one, two, uh, okay. it'd be 30. Yeah. Okay. Negative numbers, now this, I don't use too, too often, but you can start from the end of a list. So my list negative one would be equal to 40. Eli, what would my list negative four be? Um, yeah. So you would use that if you have like a really long list and you want to call out the number on the end? Yeah. The or you don't know exactly how long your list is going to be or how long it is because it's dependent on the user. You would code um, minus one and it would print the very last object. List length. So you could do. Um, if, a, if you use a while loop and it's dependent and the user just keeps answering stuff, answering stuff, enter, or I'm sorry, entering, 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 you could do my list length and it gives you how many items are in that list. Does that make sense? Yes. So length is how many objects are in that list. And like I said, we're gonna go through this. We may wait until go through all of these tomorrow because we're uh, we only have 10 minutes left. And I want you guys to, I want to make sure we get through how far the notes go through. Yes, that's right. Repetition, indexing. Oh, no. Okay, we're actually going to stop there. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the code.